Hello, all you beautiful people. It's wonderful to have you back for another KenCast. It's Sunday, and whether you're watching on YouTube or X or Facebook, or maybe you're watching on the replay right now, it's great that you've joined us. If you're watching live, be sure to jump into the live chat so you can tell us everything you think about this topic. I know this is a fun topic today, controversial, maybe. Uh, we're going to go into this. It's about Hillary Swank giving an interview where she apparently said she will not be in Cobra Kai Season 6. But does she mean what she says? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, in order to have this discussion, I thought it would be important to bring in someone who uh, not only is an expert in all things Cobra Kai, but someone with a lot of wisdom. And that's why I'm bringing in Mike, Cobra Kai wisdom himself. Mike, how are you today? No, no, oh. no, no, no. I didn't call her a bitch. I said she. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, <laughs> Hey, how you doing, Mike? Good to see how you. How you doing? Good to see you too. What's what's go, what's going on with you? It's great. It's wonderful to see you. Yes, it's nice to be seen. Thanks for the invite. Always appreciated. Um, you smell that? It's it's the smell of season six in the air. It's it's really we're, we're full steam ahead. There's no stopping it. Season six is upon us, and news is starting to trickle in, including this new story today. So it's uh, it's an exciting time in the fandom. Absolutely. And I, and I can see you're wearing a, a, a wonderful Cobra Kai shirt. Yes. Getting into That's it. Awesome. It's, it, you know, I'll just, I just need to, again, step back and just display a, a lot of gratitude here. I love the fact that we're in a world where there are so many options where you can buy a Cobra Kai shirt and in, in any style you want, you can buy any kind of Cobra Kai apparel. And, uh, you know, probably what, seven, eight years ago, I mean, Maybe there might be some some store selling some retro things and you might be able to find a shirt or something that's a Cobra Kai shirt. But but now it's just everywhere. And uh, I, I think your your apparel is making the world look more beautiful. Well, I appreciate that. I, I'm definitely overdue for some new stuff. This uh, this I've had for a little bit. And, uh, you know, we're going on six years now since season one dropped almost um and so new merch it's like seasonal at this point what's the the 2024 merch going to be especially with season six coming up i'm sure we're going to be getting some some new good stuff so it's exciting yeah it, it totally totally uh i know in the latest trailer they had alicia hannah kim she was sitting on a couch uh with with some uh cobra kai season five pillows and i realized oh my i need some cobra kai pillows like i, I think that would be fantastic so you could decorate your whole home theoretically in Cobra Kai merch at this point. I, I'm sure they have pillows, blankets, sheets, pajamas. I mean, you could be a full-on advertisement for Cobra Kai if you wanted to. Well, and if anyone right now watching has done that, let us know. And then uh, maybe uh, maybe we'd love to see pictures of your place if you have it completely decked out yes. with Cobra Kai merch. I would love to see that. I think You'd be that my would be hero, a... that's for sure. Yes, yes, indeed. Well, let's, Mike, before we jump into today's possibly contentious, controversial topic, yes. let's, uh, <laughs> let's go through some, uh, let's go through some comments. Um, Dream Awake says, I haven't seen her movie, so I couldn't care less. Only Ironside makes me tempted to see it. Colonel Dugan. Uh, uh, Jaden, Jackie Chan, forget about it. Okay. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and that's guys, let us know what you think, because, you know, I know that there's just a diversity of opinion here. Uh, Bumblebee Tuna says, I have nothing against Hillary Swank as she's a great actress, but it's pointless for Julie Pierce to come to Cobra Kai. Um, Samantha says she's not even canon. Uh, and I just, I will say though, uh, and Mike, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. The way John Josh and Hayden have set up canon, it's that, any movie where Pat Morita plays Mr. Miyagi, uh, that is canon. So Julie Pierce, according to the creators of Cobra Kai, uh, is within the Miyagi verse. Am I right about that, Mike? I believe that's correct. Although Mr. Miyagi conveniently has a different first name in the next Karate Kid. <laughs> um, uh, yes, that's what. 
they have said that anytime there is a movie in which Mr. Miyagi has appeared, that is considered canon in their Miyagi verse. And I think that was that this this topic we're discussing today was the reason for leaving that open ended for that possibility. Indeed, yes. Uh, Glam says I wouldn't mind seeing her, but if she won't be there, that's also fine. Right. So it's like that'd be great, but it's okay if she doesn't appear. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Talking Star Wars says teaser without name dropped in season two. Interesting. Um, I'm trying to remember right then. That, that's great. I think that's the reference when uh, Daniel is first teaching the wheel technique and he tells Robbie and Samantha, you know, it's been a long time since there's been more than one student or, or two students at this dojo before he goes on and teaches them the wheel technique. Yeah. And he believed, well, who else could he be? Oh, he says, it's been a long time since this dojo had more than one student. As far as we yeah. know, there's only ever been one student, Daniel, which leads me to believe who else could it be but Julie San. Right, exactly. <laughs> could 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 I could it also be like Samantha? Could because, be. Uh, yeah. Because yes, she did train when she was younger. Uh, it's not clear if she ever trained at the Miyagi dojo as opposed to their their home dojo. But uh, again those purposely vague yeah. references just leave it open yep it could be samantha could be an easy explanation or it could be something bigger like there is a history between julie and daniel yes um you know i i love that and that's one of the things i love about cobra kai is like they're constantly doing things like that uh constantly putting in things and teases and you know my favorite one of course was when they mentioned terry silver in season one unbelievable yep. you know um let's see uh terry johnson says hello ken hi terry yeah i saw an article posted where she said she wasn't going to be in it yes and we are going to look at that article in just a couple minutes um nerd world says ken so no julie but she is the last one who didn't appear i know hillary is a mom now and everything but i want to see her okay we'll we'll, we'll take a look we'll see if that's still possible uh if, if we could see her um, let's see. Um, so many great comments. AEH, thanks for being a channel member. I have a feeling that Hillary Swank will be on the last season, but she is not allowed to reveal it yet. Yeah. That's that's kind of an interesting angle, isn't it, yeah. Mike? Yeah. I, I may be inclined to agree with you. We we'll, we'll shall see. <laughs> Indeed. Uh DJ Club <laughs> Rule says Hillary Swank is probably keeping her character, Julie Pierce, a secret for season six. In, indeed. Uh, Matt Moore says, hello. Great to have you, Matt. And thanks for being a channel member. Um, Shin Batman says, I have a feeling she'll be in this season secretly. Um, uh, John, thanks for being a channel member, John. NASA Kane's fan says, if she were appearing, I think we'd know by now. Interesting. It's, uh, you know, it's the one thing is I'm about this topic and mike you'll have to go back in time with me and tell me what you remember but i seem to remember and someone brought this up in a comment that after they had completed season three and we were waiting so long for season three to come out that uh people were asking yuji okamoto are you going to be in cobra kai season three and he replied that no no one's reached out to me yet uh but he had already filmed his scenes yeah, it, it's definitely, things. you know, being put on the spot. And I, I would say the same thing of Sean Kanan when being asked over the years about Mike Barnes. And he would right. just say, no, 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 which for a long time was true. He wasn't in it. Um, but then he had to go through that because he filmed season five before even season four dropped. So there was a lot of, you know, him having to deflect all those times. And, and I even, when he, it was finally announced that Mike Barnes was going to be out, I, I reached out to him at one point. I said, wow, that must have been absolutely torture keeping that a secret. And he said, you have no idea. So um, yeah. there definitely is an interest in trying to keep things a surprise for the fans as much as they can. Yes. W wonderful point. And I'm so glad you brought up Sean, because yeah, you're right. That was, I mean, people were on him since season one about that. Oh yeah. When you're coming back, Barnes, when you're coming back, bad boy. <laughs> yeah um we've got a comment from tig terry silver rocks evening ken hey. and everyone hope all is well thanks for joining us so much uh tig terry silver rocks is our executive producer of ken cast 
and she is a champion both on this channel and in real life. So yes. thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, uh, Ian Preston. Hey, Ken, remember me? You answered a question for me on Drew's live stream. I, uh, yeah. Thank you for joining us, Ian. I think, uh, I think we've seen you on this channel before too. And thank you for joining us. Uh, it's, it's always great to have all you guys. Joanne is joining us from Facebook. Hi, Ken Cole. Hello. Thanks for joining us. Terry Silver himself. Great. <laughs> I'm honored. Oh thank you. He's here. <laughs> He's out of prison. Yes. Indeed. Uh, and then just a couple more guys, and then we'll get into our discussion. Uh, Wayne says, I think it's wishful thinking with some people that Hillary Swank will be in Cobra Kai with her new kids and her work schedule. I think she's telling the truth. Uh, and Joanne says, hi, Cobra Kai wisdom. Hey, Joanne. Mike. And then, of course, Peter Vonisak from Cobra Kai Companion yeah. podcast, Podstalgic, Obliterated Companion. Thank you for joining us, Peter. Uh, great, great to see you. Um, and let's see, we've got Darkest Hour. Sean Cannon also said he wasn't going to be on. Yep, exactly. Yeah. I'm not buying her denial. I'll believe it. I believe she'll be there. Okay. Let Now, Mike, we'll, we'll get to more of your comments, guys. Please let us know what you think. But we're going to get into this discussion now. Before we get into the data of what we've just seen this past week, Mike, what is your personal inclination of what you would like to happen? Do you have a preference on whether we'd like to see Julie Pierce, who was the main character in kind of this, you know, not quite with the other movies, a very different feel to it, the next Karate Kid, um, Hilary Swank, it's her first huge leading role in a movie. And of course, she's gone on to win two Academy Awards. Um, do you have a certain feeling of whether you'd like to see her or not? In season six you know at this point it feels like she's the one aspect of the karate kid films that is missing that hasn't been in it yet at all and like the movie or not and, and i respect all opinions but that there's little differentiation in opinion that the next karate kid is not the best movie in the world but that people love hillary swank she's a two-time oscar winner as you said she's a fantastic actor and that she is connected to Mr. Miyagi. As far as we know, she is Mr. Miyagi's only other student. And one of the biggest themes of Cobra Kai has been keeping the spirit of Mr. Miyagi alive, even though Pat Morita himself obviously could not be on the show. So in that respect, I feel like she kind of has to be in it, if possible. If only for a small moment, one scene, a couple of scenes in one episode, similar to Jessica returning in season five, doesn't have to be a huge deal. If she gets in a fight, great. But if it doesn't happen, also fine. And so I, I know the big three would love to have her. They've made no secret about that. So if it's in the cards, I'll say she's been doing uh, TV circuits lately and doing a lot of interviews for her new movie. She looks fantastic. She looks like she could get into a fight scene tomorrow mm -hmm. if need be. Mm -hmm. So uh, that may not be a coincidence. So I, I would like to see it. And the other aspect of it, historically, what I love about Cobra Kai is I feel like it's done maybe some of the weaker aspects of the Cobra Kai film's justice. Speaking mostly about Karate Kid Part 3. I, I know there are some who would say maybe Karate Kid 3 isn't the strongest movie in the world. It's kind of silly, kind of cartoonish, but it took characters like Mike Barnes, like Terry Silver, and did them the justice that they deserve. That these are fantastic actors. You get good writing. You can make anything amazing. And I believe that they have accomplished that in season four and season five with those characters. You do something similar with an Oscar winner. You take that character and give her the writing and support of the big three and bring her into the real. You could do that justice. You could do her character and that aspect of Miyagi's story justice. How cool would that be? So my thing is, like, why not? I'd like to see her if she's there. If it doesn't happen, I'm not going to be crying tears. But I, I would personally like to see her return. I love how you put that, Mike. And I want to key into one thing you said there, especially at the end. When you said that you take someone with the talent of Hillary Swank and you pair that with the amazing storytelling from the big three, that you could have something very powerful. I'm wondering if there could be something powerful enough 
for an entire other series focused on Hillary Swank, shepherded by the big three. I don't know. I'll just throw that out there. I've been throwing that out there lately. It's a possibility. Um, I mean, um, she's she's no stranger to Netflix. She did have her own show, um, which I heard was excellent. Uh, it didn't move forward past the season one. But uh, yeah, you're going to make a, a whole new spinoff. I mean, after season six, we're going to be starting to talk about spinoffs. So right. that's just another possibility, if, especially if, if, if her return in season six happens and is a big success. Right. And I, and I think if you're looking at it from a Netflix or network standpoint, you're going to want something, especially in this climate where they're pulling back on shows, you're going to want a series with a, a very recognizable star, someone who yes. could bring in audiences. And while you could have spinoffs, you know, with all these other characters, uh, really, I mean, if you think about it, you've got, if you have a Julie Pierce spinoff, I mean, that series is headlined by a major star. And so I think you would have yeah. an immediate audience beyond even necessarily the Karate Kid or Cobra Kai universe. You'd have all of Hillary Swank fans watching. I mean, it's a I, I have to believe it's been discussed, at least just discussed. Um, I'm sure they're talking about every possibility at this point. Right. What could happen? What would we like to do? And what would Netflix be interested in that could potentially be a success for future installments of the Miyagi-verse? Right. Indeed. And John, NASA Kane's fan with the super chat. Thank you uh, so much. It says, I think if she were going to appear, she would give a non-denial denial example. I can't comment or I'm not liberty at liberty to say at the moment. So, so yeah, that's, I, I have some thoughts on that. If, if she was to give that type of response. Right. So let, and let's talk about that for a second, because we're going to dive into actually what she said here uh, in a second. But Mike, can you give us an overview of the different potential responses she could give to that to this question? So if people could ask her, are you going to be in Cobra Kai season six? What are the different options she could say at this point, do you think? Well, I think she was definitely put on the spot. She was there to talk about her movie. She was sitting there with Alan Richson, Jack Reacher. It, the background was all about their new movie. It was a seven minute interview. They were supposed to be talking about the movie. And then, uh, gotta love Collider. First minute he goes in for the first question, I gotta talk to you about Cobra Kai. So I think she was <laughs> caught a little off guard, which is why I think her response was frankly the best she could do while being on the spot during a live interview. But if she is going to be in it, if it's, con and I think if she is going to be in it, she would know at this point. I, I don't think that this is a mystery. They're in the middle of production. I don't think this is something they're, they're saving that they haven't talked to her about. It. So I think she knows for sure whether or not she's going to be in it. If she is going to be in it, but she can't say yet that she's going to be in it, which I believe would be the case. I think if she's going to be in it, the intent would be for it to be a surprise as much as possible that very much limits on what she can say and how she can say it without fans being like, Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I get it. And I, I think she did her best, but I think even the way she responded, it led to sort of that reaction to, to a lot of fans like, Oh, okay. But I think if she gave a response, like I can't talk about it, or I'm not at liberty to say to a lot of us, that would be like, a, okay, well, you basically just answered the question without answering the question. That's a yes. So I think to some respect, she had to reply in the negative, maybe leaving a little bit of wiggle room to say, well, I said, I think, or I don't think, and then, oh, it turns out I was wrong. And then, you know, people aren't calling her a liar on social media a year from now. And I know this, I've heard that this has happened in, other movie series like with the spider-man movies and i'll admit I, I didn't keep up on that but apparently that was the case where the you know toby mcguire andrew garfield were all like no 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 and then the movie come out and there they were so my response is what she's supposed to say she, right. if she's in it and it's supposed to be a surprise and someone is putting her on the spot to ask her are you in cobra kai what else is she supposed to say but i don't think so and then let it be a nice surprise when, if it turns out that she is. So I, I say she did her best. 
I think I think that's that's a completely fair reading of the situation. And so I'll I'll bring up to give everyone a background here. I'm going to bring up first the article. So this is the how I first learned about this interview. And Collider ran this article with this headline: "Hillary Swank Karate Chops Our Dreams of a Cobra Kai Cameo." So that's kind of an interesting headline because, uh, and then underneath it says Julie Pierce won't be gracing the valley again anytime soon. So I, you know, and we'll we'll kind of go into. We're going to actually watch the video here, and we're we're going to look at this. I feel like this is sort of a misleading headline because um, it was. <laughs> It makes it seem way more definitive than the actual answer was. Which they do have a habit of doing, yes. Uh, Because I I don't believe it was definitive one way or the other, but you read this title, it it certainly has a clickbait aspect to it. Like, chopped our dreams. Like, it's definitely not going to happen. I guess that, that gets you to click on it, but then you see what she actually said. Yes, and I... I totally agree. In fact, why don't we, if we're going to keep um, doing this and talk about this, why don't we actually watch the video? So guys, I'm going to play this clip from Collider. I want to give full credit to Collider uh, as I'm playing this and we'll watch the tail end of the question and her answer. And I think this is going to be very interesting and we'll talk about it. All right, guys, we'll see you on the flip side. A new Karate Kid movie being made and the final season of the Cobra Kai happening uh, what are the chances of uh, of Julie Pierce making an appearance? Is there a new Karate Kid being made? What are they calling it? I don't think it has a title yet. Because uh, I was but, the uh, next jo- Karate Kid. Ooh. That's right. Um, <clears throat> is it going to be like the next, next Karate Kid? <laughs> um, the Karate Kid Junior. Yeah, maybe. 100%. Um, is, it a, is, it a, is it a girl or a boy? It is a boy. Uh, but I think more people are interested in seeing you in Cobra Kai. Oh, okay, so we'll move off of my being in the movie. Um, <laughs> I don't think I am. Yeah. Uh, I know it's like the number one question I get right now. Most people usually say, what's it like working with Clint Eastwood? But I think, are you going to be on Cobra Kai has almost surpassed that. It's because there's a lot of people that want to see it. All right, guys, there it is. Be interested to hear your thoughts. Uh What jumps out to you, Mike, after seeing that again? Well, the the first thing was the timing of the response. Uh, My initial response when I saw that, and I I posted about this, was she looked up, she looked to her left, she looked to her right. And I know there, there are some scientific psychological studies that talk about well, if you look up and to the right, you're telling the truth. You look up to the left, you're lying, or, or maybe it's the other way around. And she looked both ways, so I, so I don't know where that went. But the point is she she looked up, to the left, and to the right, and there was definitely a pause. And then I'll, I'll give a shout-out to Watch Party, too, because he brought this up. Like, there were just a few too many seconds for her to respond to a question that she knows the answer to. If the answer was truly no, no, I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to be in it. Um, it, she definitely had to think about her answer and you could see the, the, the wheels turning, the hamster wheel going, and she had to think about, oh, I was not expecting to talk about this. How am I going to answer this? That doesn't get me in trouble, doesn't reveal anything, but isn't definitive, isn't a lie. So again, I, I think she did her best in what she said, but the, the nonverbal aspect of it and her body movement, which she probably wasn't paying attention to and didn't have any control over, I think gave it a little bit away that what she said was not definitive. So I am taking that with a grain of salt. Yes. Yes, Mike. I, in fact, I agree. And I I might make a separate video about this, but um, I am a completely amateur armchair Dunning-Kruger expert on uh behavior analysis uh so basically that means that i I, i'm not i don't have any qualifications but i've i've read a lot i've watched a lot on it and um i don't want to make any huge pronouncements but there are a few things we can look at jumping on what you just said about like her nonverbals and everything like that yeah the first thing that that hits me is the fact that she's doing something called and it unfortunately with the way that the person phrased the question he said you know with the new karate kid movie coming out and cobra kai season six 
she jumped on that to what's called chaff and redirect. So what she did was she spent the entire time, she went, you know, I'm going to be talking about the new Karate Kid movie. And you could see that she kept going on that. Not only did she say like, there's a new movie coming out and like, oh, I'm, I'm the next Karate Kid. Wait, is it a boy or a girl? It's like, she wanted to just talk about that. And I think half of interviewers probably wouldn't have followed up. She wanted to like try to redirect away from Cobra Kai, but the interviewer brought her back to Cobra Kai and said, oh, well, people want to see you on season six. So, and then at that point she was forced to answer. So that was like a chaff and redirect. Also, it's also something called distancing. So she was trying to distance away from the question hmm. and that's a sign that something's up. So if you're talking to someone and they start doing that, you know, we don't know if it's like deception, but that means something's up. Then um, you also brought up Mike where she like looked up and uh, just from my own humble knowledge, um, what you want to do is try to look at a baseline. Like what does a person do when they normally answer questions and what are the patterns and then what changes? And if you look at the rest of this interview where she's answering very mundane questions about her movie, um, she's normally looking off to her left and down and maybe sometimes right and down. But she, this is the only time she looks way up, which means that she's accessing a different part of her brain. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not just like a simple recall question. It's not, so there's something up. Okay. And then uh, it's interesting after she answers the question. Well, let's, she says, I don't think I am. Slowly. I very slow. don't think I am. Right. She shows the words carefully. Right. So at that point, that's not even in her brain uh, or in anyone's brain. She's distanced herself enough from the question that she's not even definitively answering a certain question. Like that's, that's kind of off on an island and it's very definitive. It's not saying, no, I'm not it's saying, I don't think I am. Don't think I am what, you know, it's like, it's very vague and nonspecific. Um, so it could, it could be applied to anything uh, and it's very non-committal. So that's kind of a strange denial. And then she goes back, she, she redirects again and she goes back into how she keeps getting asked this question all the time. Yeah. Um, you know, even more than working with Clint Eastwood, like this is the number one question she gets. And it's also odd that she almost says that proudly, like, um, this is the number one question I get, whether I'm going to be on Cobra Kai. I mean, so she's aware of this and if she's not going to be in it, she could put everyone's, she could stop people asking the question by definitively answering it. She doesn't do that. And, uh, at the beginning, she was very proud in the way she said, I'm the next karate kid, you know, who are, you know, she almost ha said that with pride, which to me, it's, it's kind of an oxymoron if, if you're proud of it, but then you're not going to be in Cobra Kai season six, you know, you would think there'd be a bit more. I don't know, other emotions going on if it didn't work out. Um, so anyway, those, those are my thoughts. I don't know. What, what do you think, uh, about, about those points? I don't know. Do you agree with that? Do you see any of that? Or, um, I don't know. I do. You're right. When she started talking about the karate kid and maybe that was intentional with the collider interviewer asking about the next, next karate kid and Cobra Kai in the same question, it's, gave her time to think about her answer because she could start talking about the next Karate Kid, which she knows about because that's way in the past, while she's trying to think, oh, crap, what's my answer going to be when Cobra Kai if he doesn't let this go, which he didn't. Um, right. So, yeah, that's exactly what she did. She started talking, oh, I was in the next Karate Kid. Who's this guy going to be? Is it a boy or a girl? Is it the next, next Karate Kid? And she even got Alan Richson to, to fill in with the, the Karate Kid Jr. joke. By the way, I'd love to see him in season six. He'd be a fantastic oh, yeah. villain. He's an I love. I'm a fan of the Reacher series. I'd love to see him. But um, you're right. Her, her response to that was very looking the interviewer dead in the eye. She knew what to say. No hesitation. She's talking about something she's done. And if you watch the rest of the interview where she's talking about her movie, it's the same thing because it's talking about things she can talk about, things that she knows. She. She's a professional. She's not breaking eye contact. There's no hesitation. This six seconds or whatever it was, you definitely see a shift 
in the body language, in the eyes, the movement, the way she responds. It's very, very careful. It's slow. And it's, I don't think so. Basically, I don't think I am. That there's right. a lot more thought put into her words to be very, very careful. So read into that what you will. So, okay, Mike, I'm going to, if you can pretend to be Hillary Swank for a second, or at least get into her brain. Okay. Okay. You have very likely been approached by the big three to appear in Cobra Kai. You know that people have been asking you for years. It's the number one pe question people ask. Uh, will you be in Cobra Kai? You've answered this question on air on places like the Today Show, where people have asked you, are you going to be on Cobra Kai? And you've expressed frustration that people ask you this, but they had no one's approached her about it yet. You know, and she she was exasperated about that in the past. Okay. So now just imagine that you have been approached by the big three. You've looked at what they wanted to do. They probably said, we are completely open to whatever you want to do. We'd love you to be part of the show. And uh, you have decided, no, I'm not going to be on Cobra Kai. How would you answer that question? If you have decided that you were not going to be on the Cobra Kai series and people start asking, and you know that this question is going to come up, how would you answer the question? Will you be on Cobra Kai? I think I would answer it the exact same way she did, just okay. with a little, just with more certainty, because I would know my answer is the truth. I still wouldn't want to spoil things for the Cobra Kai fans and people coming up, but I would know my answer is the truth. I wouldn't have to think about it. That is one thing I, I was a little bit surprised because she knows at some point these questions are going to be coming. Like I said, in the past, when she did that Today Show interview, which was like a year or two ago, I, I don't think she'd been asked. She said, I've never been asked. I, mm -hmm. I am certain by this point in time, there has been a conversation with the big right. three. We're writing season six. We would like Julie to appear. Is this something we can make happen? And I, I believe that conversation has to have taken place. There's no way they're a month and a half into filming and they haven't called Hillary Swank if they want her to appear in season six. And I, I believe that, like I said, she knows if she's going to be in it or not. Uh, maybe she hasn't filmed anything yet. Maybe it's going to be towards the end, but she knows the answer to the question. So if the answer was no, if she knows she's already said no, or if the conversation has been like they did call her and say, you know what, we don't think Julie is right for season six, which I would find hard to believe. But let's say that happened. But she knows she's not going to be in the season. She might answer that same way, but just without the hesitation, without the thinking. Like, I, I don't think I am. Just kind of to, to put it to bed. It, it wouldn't have needed the thought. So, again, that just leads me to believe that she needed to carefully word her answer. Because what else was she, if the answer is yes, what else was she supposed to say? Right, right. I I love that. I a hundred percent agree. And um, you know, it's it's fascinating though. I think some people they might key into what you said though, and they might say, you know, Mike, you're right. Maybe if she was not going to be in it, she would answer the same way because it, out of compassion for the audience, she doesn't want to necessarily spoil anything. But the the other things you were saying too it's just there's so much momentum people have been asking everyone for years we know um john Hurwitz has publicly stated how amazing it would be to work with hillary swank and that they're huge fans um they've teased you know they've even put up picture of julie pierce miyagi and the hawk uh and saying you know kind of teasing you know we we're not we can't guarantee anyone in here is going to be in it but you know it just seems like, I don't know. It, it, I think people, let me, let me ask you this. If season six comes out and Julie Pierce is not in it, do you think people will be disappointed? I don't. It, it would just be like, you know what? They were keeping it to the Karate Kid tr trilogy. 
the first three movies. They just didn't want to bring in the next Karate Kid in there. So I, I don't think there'll be, I mean, maybe some people were like, oh, you know, missed opportunity. You didn't bring Julian. You didn't bring Hilary Swank in. But I don't think people would be really upset about it. As if they never brought back Terry Silver. If something right. like that had happened, or Mike Barnes, um, like that people would be upset about. How, you know, that was a huge villain from Karate Kid 3. How could you not have that person in? Um, th there are people who still don't know to this day that the next Karate Kid exists. And if you look at, uh, I keep calling him Jack Reacher. If you look at his face, he was clearly one of those people. He, I don't think he right. even realized that that was where she she got her start. It's never mentioned, um, you know, when Hillary Swank does news pieces, she just did a very big news piece on the, the CBS Sunday Morning News, which is a big deal uh, about two weekends ago, talking about her career and where she came from and all that. Next Karate Kid wasn't even mentioned. It wasn't mentioned that that's where she got her start. They didn't mention Cobra Kai, anything like that. They showed a clip from her from Growing Pains when she was like 16, mm -hmm. uh, which I didn't even realize she was in. They showed that, but they didn't even mention the next Karate Kid. So except for us super fans again, you know, sometimes we got to take our super fan ha right. hat off and think about the, the larger Cobra Kai fandom. Right. They may not even be aware of the next Karate Kid's existence or Julie Pierce. So I don't think people will be upset. It's just uh, something cool that could happen as an addition. And like I said, of the big characters of the Miyagi-verse, she just, would just be the last one. Right. That's a, that's a good point because it came out in 94, I think, 93 or 94. Yeah. And um, really no one went to see it. You know, it was it wasn't that popular. I think a lot of people, you know, there are a lot of people, a lot of kids at the time who watched it on video, you know, when it came out. But I think you're right. It, it really didn't have a lasting, <laughs> you know, I don't think it's something that people really return to again and again. So I you're right. It's kind of it. I didn't even see it when it came out in the movies. Not a bigger Karate Kid fan from the 80s, except yeah. maybe you uh, than me. And I didn't even see it when it was in the theaters. I saw it on video when it came out because I was walking by and, oh, yeah, there it is. I, I never saw it. It was at Blockbuster Video. So I took it and brought it home on, on VHS. Um, so, yeah, it, it came. It went. It got pretty much zero recognition. And again, except for us crazy super fans, <laughs> um, it, it was since been forgotten. And I think Hillary right. Swank may be one of those people who was just as well at the time had let people forget about it because she was on her way to making a, a really extraordinary movie career right and my story is the same as yours I, it hit me at the age when i don't know it's like oh is that a girl movie and you know kind of i was immature but that might be you know all the boy fans of karate kid might have had that same response to it it's like oh it's a girl movie now and um but uh which is which is too bad but i loved how she said with pride in this interview i'm the next karate kid like she owned that um, which is which is kind of cool. Yes, and with clearly no awareness that there was a next next Karate Kid in 2010. <laughs> so technically, this new kid is the next 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 Karate Kid. So <laughs> right, it shows how out of the loop everyone is, except us. <laughs> it's, oh my gosh! You know, everyone watching right now, I, I think Mike is correct. We are a special group of people. We we've got <laughs> an amazing fandom, and uh, it's very unique. I, I think. Um. Shin Batman says she just wanted to talk about her new movie, not Cobra Kai. It makes sense she would say that to shut people up. You know something, though? Uh, you're right, right. I think you're right. I think she wanted to talk about her new movie. But she did go on a long time with this. Um, you know, when interview time is limited, she could have very easily just said, oh, I don't think that I am. You know, if she really wanted to move on. But she kept that going. Like, she, she kept talking. I don't know. What do you think, Mike? Yeah, like I said, the whole interview, which was supposed to just be about the movie, was seven minutes long. And this aspect of it was one minute. One out of seven minutes talking about not her movie, her new movie, uh, is a big deal. So um, I, I think we're going to be seeing some more of that, especially as she continues to do press for her new movie. Look how much response has been gotten just from this one minute. Right. I know. I know. Well, you know, and I think those of us who are fans were wondering this, and now we know about the movie Ordinary Angels. So we, we may want to see that. We may want to see what Hillary Swank's up to now. Um, let's see. We've got 
lots of different comments here. Thank you guys for your comments. Um, Jorge says, imagine if Julie appears in season six and asks Daniel and company to recap to her what was happened so far. Daniel hands her seasons one through five on DVD. Also, Karate Kid one through three. Love it. That would be a great meta moment. Here, here's some DVDs. Go watch. We'll see you in a few hours. <laughs> yes. Um, Wayne says, it's true that Sean Cannon completely denied his involvement in Cobra Kai, and he denied it to the point where he even tried to make it sound like the producers had been rude to him to fool everyone. Interesting. Ooh. Interesting. Yeah, I don't remember that part, but uh, you could be right. Um, you know, it's... It's tough now, isn't it? We're in an age where everything's connected. There are leaks all over the place. And I don't know, Mike, it's like, how would you even begin to, I feel like there's a lot of in fan interest in this question. And I don't know what lengths they go to, to preserve, like if Hillary Swank came down to the set, how do you prevent that from leaking? How do you prevent people from taking pictures and things like that? They can do it. I, I just don't know how you do it. It, it can be done. I mean, Chosen's involvement in season five, total shocker to everyone when he showed up at the very end of season four, was a total shock to everyone. And again, he had just filmed all of season five and, and no one got a shot of him. No one saw him walking through the streets of Atlanta and were like, aha, nobody right. had a clue. So when he showed up, I don't know how they did that. True. I mean, he must have been locked in his hotel room and he was in right. all of season five which was what a four month production, something like that. Not mm -hmm. a single shred of a leak. So it can be done. It can absolutely be done. Right. It, it's in the cards and they will make that happen. Man, it's so interesting what they do. Um, and Matt Moore says what the interview should have asked is that if she as an actor slash actress would be open to returning to her role as Julie Pierce. That's an interesting question. I don't know if she, I don't know if anyone uh, has asked her that specific question yet either. It's like, will you be returning? Um, it's, a, it's an interesting question. What, what do you think about that, Mike? Yeah, I think if they had asked that, she would have said, yeah, sure. Uh, I'm a fan of the show and it was a special character for me. So if the opportunity arose, yeah, I'd be open to it, but we'll see what happens. And that really wouldn't answer anything. So again, I'll, I'll give credit to this Collider interviewer for trying. He's the only one who did it. It was just like, I got to ask, are you coming back right. in season six? So kudos to him for doing what, doing his job and, and getting the answer. It, indeed. That, that was, that was a great, he, he kept at it. The interviewer kept at it. it was, was really great. And uh, Sasha David says, trying to get into her brain maybe will you be in cobra kai i don't think i am equals julie pierce probably won't side with the bad guys and join the cobra kai dojo yeah there are a lot of ways you can kind of justify the question in your brain it's like will you be in cobra kai well maybe instead of the show maybe the the dojo that's that's really interesting a lot of possibilities all a lot of possibilities but again the big three have made no secret over the years not just now that they love hillary swank that the next karate kid they consider to be canon and if the stars aligned and the opportunity arose and it worked out they would love to have her back so the only one season left so if it worked out they have written her in and if she said yeah let's do this it's uh, it's gonna happen so it's it's really up to her indeed now um I'll, let me see i wonder if we've got more questions here. I was going to ask you kind of a follow-up. If she appears in Cobra Kai season six, which based on what you're saying, based on kind of my feelings watching this, I feel like it's more likely than not actually that she will be in season six um, to some degree. How would you like to see her as far as like how big a role would you like to see her? Like, do you think that it would be better actually if she's in it longer? Or do you think it should be a, more of a short cameo? What do you think about that? Yeah, I'd say I, I don't think she's going to have a season-long role like what Chosen had in season five. I don't think that makes sense for that to invent a whole new character, not invent, but have a whole new character and have her suddenly be in the season the whole time. But uh, something substantial, it can be short and substantial. 
like I compared it again to Jessica Andrews' appearance in season five, very, very important to that storyline, but was just one episode. You could have something like that, maybe something a little bit longer, like two episodes similar to Mike Barnes in season five. Again, very substantial, but only two episodes. Something like that would work. And that's a way to have her involved, not overuse her, and have someone, like someone said here, yes, who is a mother of two baby twins, who has a working movie career, to still be involved in the Miyagi-verse and, and play a role in it. Right. I, yeah, I, I agree with that. Like, I, I would hope it would at least be a Jessica Andrews level appearance um yeah. i don't think she would do it you have to think it's like she is a major star she is obviously proud of that role the next karate kid um i don't know if she would waste her time with just like a an inconsequential cameo like that's maybe just a scene or two uh, especially in a series like this I, I would think it would at least be like jessica andrews it maybe at least like Allie, uh at least like yeah. mike barnes and it could be, you know, if, you know, Hayden's already said it's going to be the longest running time of any season yet. Maybe she's in a few episodes, you know, I, I'm sure if you're going to bring in Hillary Swank, you'd want to have her in, in there to the degree that does justice to her character, you know? And, uh, I don't know. I, I think the more, the better, uh, it, it would be wild. Like if she were in it, like a, like a third of the running time of the season. It's possible. I don't know, but it might not be likely. I don't know. Who knows? You know, every character who has returned has returned for a reason. It, it's never just been a cameo for the sake of having a cameo. It was never just fan service. It was there for a reason, and it was an important reason. If you had asked me t uh, three years ago, should Jessica Andrews come back? I I have said, I did say, uh, like, why? What purpose would that serve? I love Robin Lively. She's hilarious. Mm -hmm. She's a great actor. Mm -hmm. But like, what would be the purpose of having her come back? I just didn't make that connection at the time. And I didn't want her to come back just for fan service. So the way they brought her back was brilliant. And she was there for a reason. And she had an important role. So I think, yes, if she comes back, it will be for an important reason. It won't just be like for silly fan service just to say, okay, we checked it off. She's she's back on the show. She, She's going to be there for an important reason. And clearly that reason has something to do with Daniel and Miyagi-Do and Mr. Miyagi and closing it all together. Right. And talking about reasons, you know, sometimes <laughs> actors, uh, they're attracted to opportunities where they get to do something different or something new that they haven't done in a while. And I would think it would be very appetizing for an actress like Hilary Swank if she enjoyed her experience being the next Karate Kid, uh, where she is definitely making like a certain type of movie and drama nowadays. If they told her, we're going to give you this role that's going to be emotional and it's going to be heartwarming and fun, but you get to kick so much ass in this movie. You literally get to kick ass. She might be like, that is something I haven't done in a long time. And I would love to kick ass on screen. I'd love to be like an action action star again. Yeah. Let the next karate kid have her real fight scene. Nothing yes. cheesy, nothing short, a, you know, a real choreographed Cobra Kai fight scene. Uh, and we know her likely opponent is totally <laughs> down for that. She has made no secret of that herself. Uh, I'm talking Alicia Hannah Kim, of course, that she, she has said, you know, bring it on Julie Pierce or whatever she said, but uh, <laughs> she would love it to happen. I would love to see that happen. I also don't see if Sensei Kim is going to come back, which we know she is. She's got to fight someone. She's got to have her big fight scene. Who else right. could it be? Who else could it be? But Julie, there's, there's no other established woman sensei on their level who could be a worthy opponent for her. So, you know, let's sit back and let it, it happen. Yeah, that's uh, I, I love how you put that. And I, I heard other people said that Alicia Hannah Kim made those posts, but then kind of deleted them all, too. Like, uh, yeah, like, that's actually my bad. <laughs> she was doing oh. one of those, like, ask me anything things on Instagram. And I said, like, uh, something like, who is Sensei Kim's worthy opponent? Like, who would you love to see her fight? And she wrote back uh, Million Dollar Baby. 
And uh, <laughs> oh, well, there you go. And now that didn't confirm yeah. anything. She didn't say right. she's coming back. It was this was who was her idea. This was before production even began. Like, who would you right. love to fight? And since I can, that, that was her answer. And yeah, I think people started taking that response as, oh, she confirmed Julie's coming back. So she deleted it. But right. again, she's made no secret. She would love to see that happen. I think she would just love to work with Hillary Swank. I mean, who wouldn't? Of course. Oh, of course. Of course. Yeah. It's the more we're talking about this, I it feels like we're, we're moving towards uh, Julie Pierce times. Let's make yeah, it. Let's happen. do it. Come on. Let, we'd love to see it. Uh, Robana, thanks for being a channel member. Robana says, I brought this up before, but going with the pattern of the writing where season one and two were Karate Kid, season three is Karate Kid 2, and season four and five were Karate Kid 3, so it would come full circle if season six was about the next Karate Kid. And um, it, it's a good point too, isn't it? Like if, if the essence of Pat Morita and Mr. Miyagi runs through the series, I love how they've kept him a part of this series, that's a vital chapter that we've seen in the movies that we just haven't seen addressed in the show. And it feels like if it's going to come full circle, we'd need that, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the fact remains the next Karate Kid was the last time Pat Morita ever played Mr. Miyagi. Like it or hate it, it was a character he was in that movie and it was the last time he ever played that role. So it is part of Mr. Miyagi's story. So yeah, if it's from that angle, I think, Julie, again, is the missing piece of Mr. Miyagi's story in Cobra Kai. I will say, though, I believe that is the extent of how the next Karate Kid should come into Cobra Kai in terms of characters. I know some people, including you, Ken, may disagree with that. Um, but, you know, Alpha Elite, Colonel Dugan, Ned, no. I, I, I think that is when you start to push it a little bit too far. Okay, now we're moving away from the Cobra Kai story. I, I don't right. need any of those folks back. If they come back, fine. But I don't need any of those. The, the only missing piece, I get from my perspective, is Julie Pierce. Because she's part of Mr. Miyagi's story. Right. And, you know, of course, I've, I've made videos where I'm supposing that... Um... Colonel Dugan actually knows Crease and Terry Silver. And, um, you know, of course, my theory that actually the fighter in the POW camp was actually Colonel Dugan, the one that Terry Silver speaks to and asks, how yes, deep is yes. that fit? Now, if something like that were true and they were tied in together and both of those characters, Crease and Terry Silver, are, I think you could say, in need of help in some way, like they're they're at a disadvantaged place by the end of season five, it would be interesting um, if you had another veteran, another army veteran that would share that experience that they do. Um, you know, I, I could see that angle for Colonel Dugan bringing him back. I don't know about the Alpha Elite, you know, um, but you know, I agree. I'd love to see Mike. I just want to see a scene with Michael Ironside, Thomasine Griffith, and Martin Cove in one scene. That just, I mean, the. The universe would explode at that point. Well, I'll play along with it. If you, <laughs> you want to bring him back, you could add the fact that he is the only other person that we know about that has beef with Mr. Miyagi. And right. They all have fought him. They all have lost to him. Yes. You say the word Miyagi, Crease, Silver, Dugan, they all hated him. They all lost to him. They all would love nothing more than to get revenge. You know, he, he destroyed their lives from their perspective. Yeah. That would make sense. And if there is a military connection, because we know Colonel Dugan was obviously in the military at some point, right. probably close in time to Crease and Silver, more or less. Outranking them both. Yes. Um, there there could be that connection. Yeah, I, I like how you put that, because that fight at the end of The Next Karate Kid was probably, could have been the most humiliating experience of Colonel Dugan's life. And you can you could see it in his face like he is he's just a messed up guy that it made him break that whole situation and who knows what the fallout was from that if he got kicked out of that school if he lost his job who who knows what happened to him but you're right he could probably blame a lot of bad things in his life on Mr. Miyagi so uh but i agree with you not necessary um, maybe too much to ask for. A lot of people, including Talking Straight with Nate, who could be watching, have theorized that there is a Boston connection with uh, the Storm on the Sea of Galilee, the Rembrandt that Terry Silver uh, had and that Mike Barnes stole. 
that's from the Gardner Museum in Boston. That painting was stolen from the Gardner Museum in Boston. Uh, and Mike has that painting now. What's he going to do with that? And that's a Boston connection, which would bring us to Julie Pierce, Colonel Dugan. That's an interesting, oh, it, it's an okay. interesting point. I don't know. Um, who knows? There, there's so many ways uh, this, this could go. Uh, so many great uh, comments. Sebastian has great advice for us. Never lose hope but never get too excited neither. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> it's going to be awesome. Whoever comes back and whoever doesn't come back, it's going to be great. I totally agree. Um, let's see. Jaws says, hi, Ken. Hi, Mike. Is Drew Tube the next Cobra Cole? It's a joke. <laughs> Julie Pierce, 98%. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so Jaws is 98%. He thinks Julie Pierce is going to be in there. Um, I, I'd kind of agree. I like I, I, you know, maybe I'd put it at 90, but at this point, I think I would be very shocked if she doesn't appear in season six as, as a super fan. I, I'd say definitely say more likely than not. Again, they, they want her. The only reason she's not going to be coming back in season six is if she said no, as I see it. Right. Um, I'm going to bring this up, Mike. I know this is slightly off topic. Uh, Dutch needs to come back. Terry mm. Silver says this now. Yeah. Last week, uh, we were talking about that. And previously on Chad McQueen's Instagram, uh, he had his daughter had made a post basically saying, you know, thank you, all the fans. We love all the great Karate Kid fans that want us want Chad to appear on Cobra Kai, but he won't be appearing on the Cobra Kai series like he, that post was made. However, that post is now gone. That post has been oh. deleted. Oh, does that mean anything? Everything means something. Maybe. I, I did not know. That's new information to me. Wow. This yes. is exciting. But, you, well, you know, I, I believe that post by his daughter came out sometime around season two, maybe between two and three. So it was, it was a while ago. I know that right. for sure. And so at that point, we're thinking, oh, this show is going to go on for season and season and season. And every single time a season comes, you're going to get all these questions to me. Are you going to be in Cobra Kai? Are you being Cobra Kai? And, and they just wanted to make it definitive. No, it's not just now. I'm not going to be in any season. I appreciated the role, but I'm not an actor anymore. I'm not going to be in it in the future. So you don't have to ask me every year, every time a new season comes out, like what right. they were doing with Sean Kanan. Uh, now we're talking about one season, one season left. Um, and he's either going to be in this one season or he's not. So again, you know the big three would l have loved to have had him. They would have loved to have had him in season two way back when. It, it didn't happen. But now it, it's one season left. Could there be a conversation that was had? Be like, hey, look, Chad, we just got this one season. Would you come back for this one thing? It, people would go nuts. And then the show's done. Then, then you don't have to do anything ever again. It's guaranteed. It would just be a one-time thing. We wouldn't be asking you a year from now to come back again because they're not going to be in future seasons. Would he be more open to something like that where it's he knows it's guaranteed it's just a one-time deal, a one-time return, and it would be fun. He'd see William Zapka and all the old Cobras again. Maybe. Maybe that's it. And to go and take the effort to delete that post, which, like I said, is now three years old, maybe four. Right. Um, that's that's interesting. I'm gonna have to mull on that, but uh, to take the time to go back and delete a post that could be telling. Do you happen to know when it was deleted? Don't know. We uh, we were talking about it, and then one of the commenters posted that that is missing, and then so uh, we uh, like live. We brought up his Instagram account, looked through it, and it's missing, and wow. um, it's not there. There there are no posts related to that anymore. And like you said, when was the last time, Mike, you had gone onto social media and gone through to delete a post that you made years ago? Never. Um, ever, I don't think. Um, yeah. You know, you talk about people who delete posts, it's because, not, not talking about me, but people who delete posts, it's like, oh, they found that post offensive, or you've made a joke and it landed wrong. And so, you know what, I'm just going to delete the post and get rid of it. Something... Right. That you want to speak. But to go back three, four years and delete something, I mean, 
they were just being honest at the time. He didn't say anything wrong or offensive or, or mean to anyone. It was just like, this, this is how it is. I'm not going to be on the show. If that's no longer the case, then yeah, you would go back and, and delete something like that. Yeah, man. It's just, and now that they very cleverly said that he was in prison, can you imagine a prison hardened Dutch like unleashed? <laughs> I, I be... mean, <laughs> it, it doesn't even have to be unleashed if you think about it. Picture this who's going to prison now, or at least temporarily? Terry Silver, Dutch together in prison, federal prison, hammering things out. If there's some connection there, some team up, one of the very, very few things we know about season six is a team up that we've never seen before. You want to picture a prison fight with Dutch and Terry Silver? Wow. Wow. I mean, oh. boom, something like oh, you, that. Oh, you're blowing my mind, Mike. I, I, I this just is, this thought is incredible. of it. I mean, so, so who even knows it? And, and that would keep it localized so he doesn't have to get out and find a reason for him suddenly to be back and part of the storyline it's oh he's in prison and now suddenly terry silver is too and the two of them meet up and they have this cobra kai history and talking about larusso and and all that and you know maybe maybe dutch has some impact on terry silver kind of you know getting his mojo back maybe terry silver's down he's out he's he's lost he's been defeated and dutch brings Quicksilver back. Who knows? Wow. Man. Oh, I love that. And uh, Darkest Hour says it well. Dutch post deleted. Don't you dare toy with my hopes. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's this is new to me, too. I'm like, ooh. Let's... I I'm totally down for a Dutch return. I, I would love that. Absolutely love that. I, I, I would love that, too. And, you know, I'm with Courtney. Thanks for joining us on X, Courtney. You can hey, comment on on X and we can bring it up here now, guys. Um, would be cool to see Hillary Swank in season six. Yes, I, I agree. Um, that the other thing I think Mike is that there's so much, and I, this has been brought up before. There's so many characters. There's so much story at this point that it's a balancing act, isn't it? In terms of if you're going to be bringing in all these new characters, um, or all these new appearances by legacy characters to have it all fit into this already massive ensemble this incredible story um you know it might be that there might not be room for certain characters that we'd like to see yeah I, not everyone is going to be back um you know is freddie fernandez gonna come back our snake and Dennis right. going to come back. We, we, the super fans would love everyone to come back. And I think the big yeah. three would, would love that as well. But again, it has to be for a reason. It has to be to serve whatever the storyline of season six is, whatever the drama is, whatever the conflict is, their characters have to be there for a reason. That's what's been consistent with the five seasons so far. Every return is important. Every line is important. Every character is important. and it has to be the case this, but if you're going to have these returns, if you're going to have the biggest, baddest season ever, and if we, we know, and if we believe that Cobra Kai season six is going to be the longest in terms of time. Yeah. That opens itself to having a main storyline, but also having some pretty cool returns happen. Yeah. Yeah. I, and there's that urgency. I, as a fan, you know, I'm sure you feel this and I do too. It's like, there's that urgency now because we want to see all of these characters and all these storylines that we enjoyed in these movies when we were kids. And we know that there's only one more season. And so we want to see that happening. And so I think it's probably inevitable that the super fans like us will probably be in some way disappointed. Like I'll personally be disappointed if we don't get like snake and Dennis, although I can understand why we wouldn't. And you know, Jonathan Albertson's missing uh, <laughs> like, or he's, literally. he hasn't made contact. Yeah, literally. Um, and so I could see how that could be tricky, but, you know, I, I think if we just prepare for, we're going to be disappointed somehow, we just got to be grateful for, for what we get. Cause it's, it's going to be probably, like you say, absolutely amazing. Yeah. I, look, you've got three, maybe th four movies. Not every character from every single movie is going to return. I'd love to see BD Wong from Karate Kid 2 come back. Yeah. That's not yeah. going to happen. It's you know, he pops happen. up and asks everyone to come to a dance again. That's 
even though I adore him. Um, it, it's going to, we're going to get some returns. They've already confirmed that a character from the Cobra Kai films we have not seen before is going to appear in season six. They haven't said how many, they just said at least one is. So we know we're getting someone new and it, it's going to be brilliant. They haven't let us down so far. And I know they have no intention of doing so for their grand finale. Yeah. You know something? I do see a scenario with BD Wong coming back. Oh. I do see a scenario Hit in me. the what finale, in, in the series <laughs> finale, uh, the series, I'm just guessing, will end with a uh, double wedding with uh, Chosen and Kumiko and also Johnny and Carmen, and oh. they'll get married in Okinawa. And B.D. Wong's character, oh. Boy on the Street, has grown up to be a wedding planner running the wedding, of course, which would be a reference back to the Father of the Bride movies with... Oh, Steve yes. Martin. He's fantastic. Oh, love it. I love it. I, I Yes. Like I could see something like that happening. Like at the very He's last fantastic. minute, yes. just something pops up and it's like, what the heck? And he might do it. I mean, he might do something like that. Absolutely. Oh, now it has to happen. Now, if I don't see that, <laughs> I'm going to be disappointed. Uh, come on, big three. If, if you haven't written that, change the ending and make that happen. That's fantastic. Right. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I hope we go back to Okinawa once more. Uh, that would be great. Uh, who, who knows what's going to happen? Well, anyway, Mike, thank you so much. This has been such an amazing conversation. I feel like I've learned a lot. I feel uh, if I had any kind of, uh, I don't know, internal conflict of how I felt about this, I feel like it's completely gone. Uh, hearing your wisdom is good for all of us as fans. And um, I am always happy when you get a chance to, to join us. So th thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me. Always appreciate it. And uh... I'm feeling the juice. I'm feeling the energy. I'm feeling <laughs> excited. We are absolutely in season six mode. There's no turning back now. So it's uh, it's an exciting time to be a Cobra Kai fan. It is 100% an exciting time. And um, we look forward to having you back as soon as possible. For those of you who are members, finalists, and above, I will continue the live stream uh, in the members-only area. So um, we'll look forward to seeing you there. And Mike, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And uh, I hope... We can all uh, enjoy new news, perhaps new leaks about season six. And we're just getting the uh, mojo going right now. Only going to get better. Thanks, Ken. <laughs> You're welcome, Mike. All right. We'll see you guys. And uh, if you enjoyed this today, go ahead and hit like and subscribe. Uh, go visit Mike. Follow him on social media. I've got his links down in the description. It, you will Your days will be brightened every day with his humor and his memes. Uh, it's absolutely wonderful. I don't know how he keeps doing it. Uh, so creative and it's wonderful. So go follow Mike Cobra Kai Wisdom and uh, we look forward to seeing you all next time on KenCast. We'll see you. Want to be part of the live KenCast show? Subscribe to the Ken Cole YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to get alerts about every new show. Thanks for joining us and we look forward to seeing you next time on KenCast.